I want you to hit me as hard as you can. Hey everybody, it's Chris Bumray here again for JoeBlow.com with another video edition of The Best Movie You Never Saw. And this week we're taking a look at the much maligned but pretty damn cool Halloween 3 Season of the Witch starring Tom Atkins as a troubled doctor who stumbles upon an evil plan hatched by a diabolical CEO of the Silver Shamrock Novelties Company where on Halloween night the masks they've created for children come to life and kill their wearers. Now, in addition to Tom Atkins, this co-star is Stacey Nilkin and Dan O'Herlihy, who you may all remember as the old man from Robocop, and it's written and directed by Tommy Lee Wallace, a close collaborator of the director of the original Halloween, John Carpenter, who returned to do the score with frequent co-composer Alan Harwath. Now, following Halloween 2, John Carpenter, who was already reluctant to participate in a sequel, decided that Michael Myers had run his course. Oh, how little did he know. Oh shit! Instead, his idea was to turn the Halloween franchise into a series of anthology movies that could be loosely connected by the holiday, but also be completely independent of each other. To that end, Carpenter took a step back, hiring Tommy Lee Wallace to write and direct the new film, which departed from the slasher formula and took the film into the world of witchcraft and science fiction. With Carpenter favorite Tom Atkins as his leading man and a very modest $2.5 million budget, Wallace made a pretty interesting little movie that's wholly original compared to the first two movies. Despite a few good reviews though, the movie tanked at the box office, only grossing $14 million, which isn't bad for such a cheap film, but far less than what Universal was anticipating. Apparently, fans were disappointed that Michael Myers wasn't in it, and ever since, he's been a constant presence in the franchise. There are still people that come up to me and say they hate Halloween 3 because it didn't have Michael Myers in it. I tell them that that was 25 to 30 years ago. Get over it. We had a wonderful time making it and I think it's a good standalone movie. John Carpenter originally wanted to make a story every Halloween that would be different, but the producers said no because Michael Myers is making so much money. They told him that we could shoot Halloween 3, but then they're done with those different stories. Now, like many of the movies that I've featured in this series, I'm not going to argue that Halloween 3 Season of the Witch is some kind of ignored masterpiece. But if you're a fan of vintage era John Carpenter and 80s horror, this is the perfect film. Now, Carpenter did not direct it, but Tommy Lee Wallace was his protege and his handprints are all over it. This feels like a vintage John Carpenter movie. For one thing, we get one of his patented synth scores, co-written with his frequent 80s collaborator Alan Harwath. Now, together, these two guys also did the soundtrack for Big Trouble in Little China and a bunch of other John Carpenter classics. The importance of this can't be overstated, as anyone familiar with his music knows it gives his movies a pulse that's as strong as anything else. They also have the original's Dean Cundy as the DP. So even if Michael Myers isn't around, this still feels like a Halloween movie. Although a lot of people thought that Halloween should have never actually been part of the title. Tom Atkins himself said it should have just been called Season of the Witch and not put Halloween with it at all because if it doesn't have Michael Myers and people thought what the hell is this? Over time, it's become very popular on its own as it had always intended to be. It's curious to wonder how this may have fared had it just been called Season of the Witch, but at the same time, Halloween as a franchise was a double-edged sword. They wanted the fans to come in, but they also knew that these same fans wouldn't be getting a Michael Myers movie. It'd be like doing a Jaws movie without a shark. It's worth noting though that Dino Herlihy's CEO of Silver Shamrock is way more evil than Michael Myers ever was in the first place. Now Michael Myers is just a blunt tool. He just kills without reason. Dan O'Herlihy's CEO of this company wants a big body count. He wants to use pagan magic to kill thousands of children with his evil masks. I mean, this is not a nice guy. Herlihy became very well known to my generation a couple years later as the old man in Robocop, and he's absolutely perfect as the baddie with this kind of Irish charm that hides the fact that, well, he's pretty damn evil. It was the start of the year in our old Celtic lands, and we'd be waiting in our houses of wattles and clay. The barriers would be down, you see, between the real and the unreal. I have to say, also love Tom Atkins as our everyman hero. He's a familiar figure from 80s action movies. He's in Lethal Weapon as Murtaugh's old friend from Vietnam who gets killed pretty early on. 
and to me there's something very authentic about Atkins and all of his 80s films. And that maybe he's a little too surly, a little too drunk, and a little too hungover all the time to be playing a doctor, even a burnt out one, but he's kind of an awesome anti-hero, and no one can say that he doesn't play the part to the hilt. I mean, that last scene where he's screaming into the phone, STOP IT! STOP IT! STOP IT! <laughs> is pretty great. Now, being the 80s, there's also tons of gratuitous nudity and some really creative gore in this one. So, if you're a fan of that kind of exploitation, well, this one's right up your alley. It's a shame that Carpenter's anthology plan didn't work out, and a few more fun one-offs like this one would have been way better than the mediocre Halloween sequels we got over the next 20 years, although I have to say, the franchise certainly was given new life last year with David Gordon Green's new version of Halloween, and, well, we've got two more Michael Myers movies on the way. Now, one thing I should mention about Halloween 3 Season of the Witch is that if you watch this movie, Silver Shamrock's little jingle is going to get implanted in your head and you're not going to be able to forget it. I mean, it's a very, 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 very catchy, but also very, very, very annoying tune. Happy, happy Halloween, Halloween, Halloween. Happy, happy Halloween, Silver Shamrock. When I worked at Blockbuster Video, a friend of mine, Ruel, he used to sing this song all the time when he would get really upset. So we'd be working the cash together, and then I knew the things that the pressure was getting to be too much for him when he would start going, Happy, happy Halloween, 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 happy, happy Halloween, Silver Shamrock. At this point, even though he was my manager, I'd have to send him into the back room, take a little break, because, well, I mean, if you've seen this movie, whenever the song plays, bad things happen, right? I didn't want that to happen in real life. Now, my favorite scene in this movie is when Tom Hatkins winds up captured by O'Hurlihy's goons and they explain their whole diabolical plan giving Atkins a ghoulish demonstration on an annoying wholesaler of Silver Shamrock products. And that jingle, I mean, you listen to it once and you can't forget it. You just can't. <laughs> now, if you want to see Halloween 3 season the Witch, it's easily available on most streaming sites and on DVD and Blu-ray, but I have to say there are still a lot of people that hate this movie. I wrote it up a couple of years ago and the comments were so bad that, well, we had to turn the comments off on this one because people still, I don't know why, harbor really, really strong sentiments against it, even though the movie came out in 1982. I still love it, and I think that if you take away the name Halloween, this is just a great 80s horror movie on its own two feet, and I really enjoy it, and I've always enjoyed returning to it. It's cheesy, but again, it's a lot of fun. It's not a classic, but on its own merits, you can't go wrong watching it, or especially around this time of year. For me, it's one of the great hidden gems in John Carpenter's filmography, and I recommend checking it out for a good time. Until next time, I'm Chris Bumbray for JoeBlow.com.